Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're in Fostoria, Ohio to check out Cali's performance products at their main headquarters. A lot of you guys will know them for their top tier performance products, their big horsepower crankshafts and connecting rods, as well as picking up a lot of what was left off when crane cams went out of business, they snatched up all their machines and grabbed up a lot of their business. What you might not know is all the business that Cali's does with Mopar, with the newly rebranded Direct Connection catalog and all the licensed product that they're putting out. They're doing all the Gen 2 Hemis, they're doing a lot of Gen 3 stuff that we're gonna be really excited to see in the next coming months and year. So we're gonna take you on a tour. We're gonna to show you through all the different processes that they go through for their crankshafts, their connecting rods, their cams, and everything else that they got cooking. Unfortunately, not everything is underneath one roof. A lot of stuff is off-site. We're not gonna be able to take you there. And quite frankly, they're not gonna show us everything you can understand. But hang tight, this is gonna be really exciting. Some really cool stuff. Hopefully this will scratch a big itch for a lot of you performance guys who are looking at building a big motor this year. So hang on, we're gonna have a great episode. Hi, my name is Jared Lorenzen. I work here at Cali's Performance Products and Sales of Tech. I'm third generation, fortunate enough to continue working here and carrying on the torch. My grandfather worked here years ago, since retired. My father still works here and now I'm fortunate enough to fill in. There's a, a few generations here, of course the owner and his son, there's that torch passing there. and few others out in the shop so it really is a you know private family owned operation. Located right here in Fostoria, Ohio for the past 30 plus years. Uh, everything American made, you know, take great pride in the American craftsmanship and keeping jobs right here in Northwest Ohio where so many places have up, uprooted and left. All right, well, let's go check it out. All right. Where all the crank shafts get started out. We rough in the mains to get the strokes set here. So these are your basic cores that come to you guys. Yep. Now where are the where are the cores for? We have two forging suppliers right now. We have some come from Italy and some come from Japan right now. All of the billet material comes from Michigan though. Okay. Uh, we use Tipkin steel or uh, Elwood. These are all LS forgings, get face and center that way when we call them the machines we know that they're spot on. We have the Pure Cell 1, the two GFMs, we'll rough in the main size. They're still oversized by about 40 or 60 now I believe, but that's because some of the other setups have the crank sitting on the mains, you don't want to scuff up a finished surface. So they get roughed in here, they come around the corner to cell 2. You can see that we've shaped the counterweight to the, the mills here. Now this is the rough pass? Yeah, well, it's more fine than it used to be. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with our crank shaft, the Dragon Slayers used to have a, a similar process done to them where the pin arms were snagged by the, the mills. But technology has come so far that we're able to get a much finer finish on the cranks through the CNC. Okay, good. Of course, the name of the game now is keeping man hours out of park. That way we keep costs down with the rising material, labor. So by doing it this way, we're able to cut a significant amount of time out of cranks. That way the price doesn't have to jump so high when it increases. Our billet cranks are still profiled by hand, which we'll get to in a second. These are all top fuel cranks? Yep. Nice. The uh, programming is done so nicely. Our guys spend a lot of time on the programming to make sure that it looks almost identical to being snagged by hand. All right. You can see that finish after they go through the shop cleaner and the vibratory tank. I mean, it's almost like glass. arms and the counter which look after they've been milled and through the vibrator and sound cleaner which we'll get to in a second. Even more pennies. We do lightning holes and oil holes over here. So they're ran on these lathes? Yep.
This is the uh, snag room where they will buff the counterweights by hand. You can see here's the before, since after it comes out of the mills, the machine marks are pretty rough. It's sharp, needs to be burned. And then he's been working on this one this morning. That you can see how smooth out it's gotten, how the counterweights have gotten shaped. And then from here it goes over to the lining holes and the oiling holes? Yep, yep. Okay. It'll get shot cleaned through the vibratory tank to have the stress reliever. All four of these skids you saw around the corner, they're all full of spline heavy cream, so we're trying to keep the market safe. Now this room was for they they pull out samples during yep, runs yep. and various usually every setup you know they change over strobe part number family whatever they'll do their setup get their QC check in here and get the green lights and keep proceeding with production okay that way right. if it is messed up they can make adjustments if necessary all right we've got several manual grinders here that we use for emergency for offline products and uh, so we don't really want to. CNC grinder on the other side here. Uh, these are usually always running with some type of bar. Our CNC grinder here for finished grinding on the green. It's 100,000 square foot in this building. Okay. We got two other buildings across the parking lot for heat treat and storage. Okay. We can head by heat treat in a minute. Last I knew, it was about 135, 140 okay. across almost three shifts now. Wow. Um, we we fell into some pretty high skilled technicians over the past couple months, so that's really helped production. This is the uh, Comstar prep area. We do a Comstar crank for the Mopar platform, Gen 2 and Gen 3. Uh, all the cranes that we get into the over the wire on the Comstar line will get checked here for run out, sizing, spacing, you know, the, the important stuff to make sure they're ready to go. We'll get piled up by It's actually pretty good over here. It's been a, a really nice endeavor for us. Not everybody can the back for a billet crane. Right. You know, your sportsman or bracket racer doesn't need a top of the line piece that we produce here. They can get away with a Comstar and have a lot of years of good luck. Exactly. And I think one of the big things is what Comstar offers a lot of guys is if he's going naturally aspirated, oh, he's sure. not making 1100 horse. Right. You know, he's not making that big boost application. Yeah. I mean, some of your some of your billet, your ultra application stuff, that's 2,000 horse, oh, you know. and above. Oh, know? yeah. Monster, monster parts. But even the Comstar stuff, we, we will rate up to 15, 1,600 horsepower on the application. You know, throw nitrous at it, supercharger. It, it's a pretty stout piece, so yeah. we're pretty happy with it. Yeah, that's, that's the one of the things about the Cali's name is... People think, man, Cali's, that, that's big dollar stuff, right. that's big dollar. But you actually offer a, a pretty vari yeah, a pretty absolutely. big variety of catalog offerings. Yep. We want to make sure that we have all aspects of racing covered. For the guys on the street, you know, on a back road, all the way up to the professional. Level. Awesome. Very cool. We'll head over to Heat Tree and check that out. Uh, thank you. The cores and the spools ready to go, just in case there's an emergency, especially with the pro teams, where they need a cam, you know, in a split second. So we'll keep roughings in for them. Okay. Yeah. What's what's the usual turnaround on a cam? Uh, if it's if we have cores there ready to go, a couple days, 48 hours, and we wow. can ship. Wow. All right. That's a heck of a turnaround. On cores, it takes longer from a you know fresh orders if you have a backlog. Sure. About 10 to 12 weeks right now, but even then, if we like I said, if we have the cores here ready to go, and we're we're able to set up on a finish grind, it'll happen within a couple days. All right, so now we're coming into heat treat. Yes, sir. Woo, yeah, you are. <laughs> A lot of the camshafts will get carburized. All right, this is carburizing. nitride vessel. It's got cranks in it right now. We'll put a load of cranks in for the heat treating, nitriding. I 
They'll sit in here for what I believe is 16 hours at a high temperature where they introduce nitrogen and ammonia to the atmosphere to cre create a surface hardness for your bearings to ride on. But when they come out, they'll have that layer of nitrogen on the nitrides on the surface that you have to polish off or grind off. The point of this is just to give the, uh, the journals of the crankshafts a solid surface to ride on. Um, Longevity. This vessel, depending on the size of the crankshaft, is about anywhere from 16 to 24 cranks. Every crankshaft that passes through here that we manufacture will be a heat treated here. Okay. Of course, this is the price you pay for having parts and that hold up. You have to check every few, so. Oh, yeah. And there's got to be some attrition. That's right. All of these wooden boxes, cardboard boxes, are all comp starter cranks that we have ready to start processing. Okay, so this is how it comes in. Yeah. Of course, it's no secret that Comstar comes from China. Sure. But it's the 14 dies that we own. We have a really good control over the manufacturing processes to make sure that they're up to par. And then everything goes through the QC department yep. and everything meets up to your standards, so. Correct. See that nitride finish on the crank? So you gotta take that off. And that's here on the finish policy. You'll take that nitride layer off, bring the crank to the finish size. Split the cap. Well, the comps are they come to a split. Oh, the comps come already split. Yeah. Okay. You just check the board here. You get pistons from pretty much anybody. Okay. ARP supplies our fasteners for all of our rods. We use Optator for a bunch of our head bolts, or head studs rather, main studs. Um, pretty much any custom application we get fasteners for through off torque there. Well yeah crank and rods and camshafts all done in house. Yeah I think that's one of the biggest surprises for a lot of guys who just weren't initiated is that Cali's offers so much outside of just the top right. end performance. I mean don't get me wrong that's how I've always known the Cali's yeah. name was the big boys you know the big dragsters you know the big NHRA stuff but you could effectively have 
everything you need for a good street motor yeah. for all these red and black boxes here are Comstar cranks ready to go on an application just like that whether it be a hot rod for the the summer months or a bracket car right we've got Comstar ready to go pretty much all the time now yeah it really it really does a huge favor to the to the sportsman racer oh, who's sure. doing it out of pocket who's yeah. a weekend warrior you know, they know it's a name you can trust. It's a quality level, Absolutely. but it's at a price point that's like, oh, hey, I could wing that. Right. Yeah. Now, you remember how I said that I wasn't going to be able to see everything because not everything was on site? Well, it turns out that the guys at Cali said, you're not leaving here until you go up about a half an hour away to Fremont and go visit the energy manufacturing facility. So here I am. And hopefully we'll show you some Generation 2 Hemi blocks. And if we're lucky, maybe some Gen 3 Hemi stuff that they're working on for this year and the coming next year. Hi, I'm Jimmy Graham from Energy Manufacturing. Uh, we currently produce products for the oil and gas industry, as well as uh, engine blocks for the performance aftermarket. We have a billet line, a cast aluminum line, and a cast iron line. I'll be showing you that today. This right here is the beginnings of our cast aluminum cell. Uh, we're going to be running a uh, Gen 3 cast aluminum block for Mopar. Um, it's going to be able to have a 6.2 or 6.4 timing drive or the 6.1 timing drive. Uh, you got the stock cam tunnel or the drag pack cam tunnel and then the drag pack lifter pattern or the stock lifter pattern. Now is that sold through Cali's and Energy or it's is that sold, Mopar? It's, it's produced here at Energy Manufacturing and then sold through Cali's through our licensure agreement. Okay. So what we just passed over here is our filled aluminum cell. Um, we've got a new MMC that we're installing with the cell controller and then uh, A77 over here and our Haas for doing our outside profile. What you're seeing Corey hogging off the material on right here is one of our uh, frack blocks for the oil and gas industry. They come in at five tons. And they end up So what you're seeing right here is our cast iron cell, and uh, right now what we're producing here is the mega block, so it's the Gen 2 Hemi or Gen 2 Wedge, um, comes in a couple different bore sizes, and then we also have an option to leave the lifters out for the pro stock stuff. So you can have a Wedge or a Hemi? Uh, what Craig's proven out over here right now is uh, the first operation to qualifying out for the Gen 3 Hemi. Oh. Like that's what we want. We're just sharing this machine right now. Process. Okay. So aluminum Gen 3 Hemi. That's going to be a heck of a. Yep. That's elephant territory, boys. So right here is our uh, WFL mill turns. Uh, they do oil and gas products as well as uh, crankshafts for. Wow. <laughs> That is a hoss. Here's some unfinished, unfinished cores. I promise you guys some Mopar stuff. So back here at the back of the shop, we just got our saw that we saw up Cali's billets with. Okay. Send over to them. Uh, we got another horizontal boring mill in the back here that we do for some contract for uh, Cincinnati mill turn, or Cincinnati uh, lathe, our Mori mill turn, and then another getting some Lewis Machine Center. So day to day, it varies. Um, depends on what's going on here. Uh, we tried kicking out one of those cast iron blocks today. Um, we are doing about a billet a day now. Um, the Navistar cranks, we get about five of them out a month. Okay. Um, some of the frack block stuff, we get about eight a month. We're looking to improve that on. Um, and then uh, just miscellaneous other right. components that we run well, through the shop. You guys are pretty versatile with yeah. what you're oh, yeah. able yep. to put out. Yeah. Now, is energy... Obviously, it's part of the Cali's family, but is energy kind of independent in the way it operates, or is it very much a sibling to Cali's? In that sense? Uh, very much a sibling. We always have stuff going back and forth. Okay. You know, the oil and gas stuff pretty much 
we keep to ourselves on that. Okay. Uh, the crank stuff is mainly where we collaborate. The block stuff, we still like collaborating with them. You know, you got to make sure that those rotational assembly components are going to mate to that block. So um, we like having an open conversation about that. Plus, the Cali sales staff handles all, a lot of our sales for it. Sure. We do we do have a technical sales guy, Ben Menz. Um, he does a lot of the block billet sales. Typically, that's who guys are going to talk to for that. Um, but we we do offer that up to the Cali sales guys. The, all right. This right here, uh, I believe, is 35,000 square feet. Okay. And how many uh, staff at the uh, About 20 guys. About 20. Is it nice being about 30 minutes away from the <laughs> yeah, yeah, headquarters? Yeah, it, does, it definitely makes it easy, that's for sure. <laughs> so we currently offer a big block Chevy 400 and 600 grade. One of our big blocks right here, uh, LS and a small block board that's at the big block board cam height. Uh, the LS and the small block board are offered in 975 to 10.2. The LS is a 924 deck as well. The big blocks are 98 to 10.6. Huge thanks to the guys at Cali's Performance and Energy Manufacturing for letting me crash and check out all the cool stuff that they're working on. Obviously, I'm here with the Hemis that are going to get machined real soon. They're, these guys are going to be heading out. And I want to thank all you guys for tuning in and watching this episode of Mopar Connection Magazine. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like, leave a comment, and maybe share it with your friends. Help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please check us out over at www.moparconnectionmagazine where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription-free to you. We'll see you there.